Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to this week's Elliott Wave Options U.S. Market Update. Boy, we thought the volatility was high last week, uh, starting with President Trump's tweet about uh, uh, China backing out of the trade deal. Well, we had even more volatility this week. I kind of think that's where we're going to go. Normally in the summertime, you have the sell in May, go away type of thing that everybody talks about and the summer becomes quiet. I think it might be a little bit different this summer. The uneasiness is going to last all the way to the G20 meeting at the end of June when Trump and China are going to sit down and chat some more. At least that's what they're telling us, that nothing's going to happen likely before then. So we have the uncertainty that will remain up until that point. Everybody still thinks some sort of a deal is going to get done, but who knows. Uh, at this point in time, uh, China's starting to uh, uh, fight back a little bit. They're threatening to... Uh, start getting uh, rid of some of the treasuries that they hold. Most people don't think they're going to do that, that they're going to unload uh, their large number of uh, treasuries, but they may stop buying. And we're going to take a look at the yield curve and interest rates in this report because I think that's the most important thing. And that's what could really derail uh, the market moving forward. So fascinating week so far. Buckle up. I think we're going to have a little more volatility this summer than normal, but that should be fun. That's what we want as option traders. Volatility is the name of the game. Let's take a look at the charts. So taking a look at the chart of the uh, S&P, you can see that uh, we did have a wave four pullback. And with that wave four pullback, um, you look for, all right, is that the end of the wave four? Are we looking for the wave five extension now? How far down does the wave four come? That's always the question that, that comes to mind is that, is that the end of it? Are we going to continue to uh, uh, go down? or um, move back to the upside. For me, I really like to see the wave four come down to the 38.2% level to really feel comfortable. 23.6 is a FIB level, and that's technically uh, by the rules when uh, you can label a four, but I like to see that 38.2% level reach is just a stronger uh, Fibonacci level and has a tendency to uh, uh, possibly hold a little bit more or as we move into uh, 50% or 61.8% on the way down, but the 38.2% uh, can hold, and then we move up to that uh, wave five level. So we'll see how that uh, plays out over the next couple of trading days, but at this point, we look like we've had a little bit of a bounce, and maybe we are going to move on and uh, head at this point up to that new wave five. Hi, I've been talking about over the last uh, several weeks, if you will, about the uh, run to this uh, new high. And uh, we began talking about it back in this area here where uh, my feeling was that uh, we are going to break that high and we need to break it significantly. We have had a new closing high. We've had a new um, uh, intraday high, but that's not enough. I meant to break it a little bit uh, to the point where it's enough that the Financial media outlets, whether it's paper or uh, TVs, will come out and say, hey, um, uh, the market's at a new high, be blasted all over the place, and that will bring the retail public in who, as we've talked about in the past, have not participated in this part of the rally. So we get the uh, retail traders to come in, then we can look for uh, a more significant correction. Again, that's my opinion. But uh, we talked about, are we going to break right through that wave three high, power through it, or will we run into a little bit of resistance and have a pullback? Well, it's clear now that we're going to have a little bit of a pullback, but now the market seems to be regaining a little bit of energy and looks like it wants to go up and try and test those highs again. If we make it up to that new wave five high, that would be enough. That would really start to make the retail traders think they're really missing out here. We've got the negative news on China, all these things going on, and yet the market's still moving to new highs. They would be, people would be thinking, I need to get in this market. Looking at the VIX, we can see that uh, we have come back down. We did have a bit of a spike there above 20. That coincided with this uh, little bit of a market downturn here. I don't even want to call it a correction because it's just a, a downturn, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and now the VIX is headed back down. But we did bounce off those lows down there in the area uh, around 12, which has acted as support for quite some time. Broke up there, and now we're heading back down. And maybe we do settle into a few more uh, doldrums in the summertime, but it's really hard to imagine that occurring before we get through that G20 meeting at the end of June. 
Interest rates, I talked to you about those. This is what we want to look at here. Is money moving into the bond market? Well, it is. As uh, the bond prices go up, yields and rates go down. Uh, TBT is showing us that rates are going down, which means money is moving in to the bond market. Flight to safety, if you will. So we have to keep that in mind when we're looking at are we ready to run and make the new wave five high or are we going to get a further wave four correction? Well, at this point, money is moving in to the bond market. Uh, obviously, China has not started dumping their holdings yet, or we would start to see interest rates rise back up. But we want to look at volume, and you can see that, uh, yeah, some money's moving into the bond market, but it's not significant. It's not a whole lot, and these are small daily bars here that are moving back down. So uh, even though money is moving into the bond market, it's not doing it with uh, a lot of gusto, if you will. But Rates continue to go down. That's good for the market. Uh, the economy is like that. There's been a, a race for the last 10 years or so uh, around the globe of countries trying to devalue their currency and keep rates as low as possible uh, because it, uh, it makes it uh, cheaper to service the debt. And uh, we certainly have enough debt to worry about uh, servicing here in the U.S. But I also wanted to show you something before we wind this up that cannot be ignored in my opinion. The yield curve inverted again. And on this line, that lime green line there, that's the uh, three month. So you see it highlights it for you there. That's the three month uh, treasury. And then we have the blue line, which represents the two year. The red line is the five year. And then this mustard colored line here uh, is the 10 year. And so you can see when you put your cursor over it that it actually gives you the rates. But right there, right at that point, you can see with the green line, it's broken above the 2, 5, and 10, which means that you now earn more interest holding something for three months versus 10 years. That doesn't make any sense. It goes against all common sense. Obviously, the longer you hold something, the more you should get paid for holding it. That's why everybody always talks about an inverted yield curve and what does it mean. Everybody is, or not everybody, but a lot of people are dismissing this. And anytime you hear the phrase is different this time, pay attention because it's probably not different this time. So uh, I think that uh, this bears watching. And remember that just because the yield curve inverts, it doesn't mean that a recession is coming within the next month or two. It's 9 to 12 months down the road. So it's not saying that we're going into a recession right now. It's saying that you need to watch for one down the road. And again, just to reiterate the rules, you when you have a, an inverted yield curve, Every time there's been a recession, it was preceded by an inverted yield curve. However, every time we've had an inverted yield curve, we have not necessarily had a recession. So uh, a lot of people say that I guarantees it, it's happened every time in history. Well, every time we've had a recession, it was preceded by an inverted yield curve, but the yield curve has inverted times in, in times historically where there wasn't a recession, but it's happened enough that we need to keep an eye on it. It needs to be something in the back of your mind, and I don't think it just needs to be dismissed as easily as a lot of the market pundits have been. So that wraps things up for this week, and we'll be back to talk to you again next week. Take care, everybody.